Hey, LC Kids, guess what? It is time for Kids Church. So grab a snack. Braxton, I'm talking to you, buddy. Um, grab a snack, settle in, and get ready to learn God's Word and have so much fun today. Um, it's Resurrection Sunday. It's the best day of the year, and we are so excited um, to celebrate with you. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the best day ever, and you're going to have a whole series on um, with videos and games and even some worship music. So get really excited, kids, um, when the worship song comes on. Get up, dance, have some fun, uh, remembering that we are celebrating what God did for us. And um, just try to be as present as you can. Um, kids, it's time. So get your hearts ready, get your ears ready. Uh, God's got a word for you today and he is gonna reveal himself to you. Uh, you get to see all the leaders today and we um, are expecting God to do awesome things like he always does. So get ready, enjoy the videos and uh, we'll talk to you later, bye. Hey everyone and happy Easter. Today is going to be the best day ever. My name is Kaylin. And I'm Justin. We're so excited to party with you today. Before we can kick off the best day ever, we need to know who's with us. So everyone, shout your name on the count of three. One, two, three. Whoa, nice to meet you, friends. We're so glad you're hanging out with us today. To get things started, we have a super fun video. Here, check it out. to kick off the best holiday ever, Easter. See, the thing is, Easter is the most awesome day because we're celebrating that Jesus is alive. And when we're following Jesus, every day could totally be the best day ever. You bet. And we're kicking off this celebration right with the best game ever. So here's how we'll play. We'll show you a picture and then there will be an Easter egg hiding somewhere in that picture. You will have 20 seconds to spot the Easter egg and then find something in your house that is the same color and bring it back to your seat. That's right. And don't worry if you missed the first one because we'll play three rounds total. Okay, here comes the first one. And time's up. Did you see that yellow egg? 
Justin, what did you find that was yellow? Actually, I found this yellow Easter egg. Want to see what's inside? Bunny clappers? Cool! Okay, I hope you're ready for the next one because here it comes. And time's up. That purple egg was hiding so well. Justin, did you find anything around here that was purple? Sure did. There happened to be a purple Easter egg in my basket. I can't wait to see what my mom put in it. Eggs with slime. Okay, there's one more egg to find. And here it comes now. Time's up. Man, that green egg was a little hard to see. Tell me about it, but I saw it just in time to grab something green. But you gotta guess what it is. Hmm, let me think. Is it a green Easter egg? You know, and look what's inside. Rubik's cubes? Cool. That really was the best game ever, but I've got something that'll top it. Wait, are you talking about the best story ever? Of course I am. If you were with us last week, then you've seen this story before. But listen carefully because there's something we don't want you to miss. You guys check it out. This is the best story ever. When God created the world, he made people and he loved them very much. Out of all the people God made, he chose the Israelites to be his special people. They moved away from the land God gave them to Egypt, where an evil ruler named Pharaoh made them slaves. They were treated terribly for hundreds of years until God sent a man named Moses to rescue them. God used nine bad things called plagues to show Pharaoh that he should seriously let God's people go free. But Pharaoh kept saying no. That was until the 10th and final plague. God sent an angel of death to take the life of every firstborn son in Egypt. God told the Israelite families to prepare a special meal by killing their best lamb. And then he said to paint its blood above the doors of their homes. The families who did would be saved because the angel who was coming would pass over their homes. After that night, Pharaoh realized that God was in charge and let God's people go free. To the Israelites, it was the best day ever. God had saved his people and he wanted them to always remember it. So every year after that, God's people remembered the wonderful way he had saved them by celebrating a meal together and they called it Passover. But God's people weren't perfect. They sinned again and again. And since God is perfect and just, he had to punish their sins. But God didn't want the people he loved to have to die for their sins. So he told them to kill a perfect lamb and that its blood would cover their sins for a little while. But God made them the best promise ever. One day, he would send the Lamb of God to save all people from their sins forever so that they wouldn't have to keep doing this. Many years later, God kept his promise and sent his son, Jesus, to earth. A man named John knew God's promise was coming true. And when he saw Jesus, he said, look, the Lamb of God, he takes away the sins of the world. John knew that God sent Jesus to be the perfect sacrifice that would forever pay for people's sins. Jesus was an Israelite, which meant he also celebrated the Passover. So one year, he and his friends were making their way to Jerusalem, where everyone was getting ready to eat the Passover meal. The people heard that Jesus was coming, and as he entered the city, a huge crowd spread their coats on the road and waved palm branches. They believed that Jesus had come to save them, so they shouted, Hosanna! 
which means save us. At the same time, some Jewish leaders saw how much the people loved Jesus. These leaders didn't believe that he was God's son and felt threatened by his power and popularity. They made a deal with one of Jesus' followers named Judas, and he agreed to hand Jesus over to them in exchange for some money. It was now time for the Passover meal to remember how God had saved his people from slavery in Egypt long ago. So Jesus sat down to eat with his disciples. He thanked God for the bread on the table, broke it, and gave it to his disciples to eat. Jesus told them that whenever they eat the Passover bread from now on, they should remember him. Then Jesus thanked God for a cup of wine and said, each one of you drink some of it. This wine is my blood, which will be poured out to forgive the sins of many. When the meal was finished, they went out to the Mount of Olives to pray. That's when Judas showed up with a crowd of people ready to arrest Jesus. When they took Jesus away, he was beat up, yelled at, made fun of, and eventually nailed to a cross where he died. This seemed like the worst day ever. But what people didn't understand was that God had the best plan ever. He was working these things out for good. God allowed all of this to happen because Jesus was the perfect sacrifice, the Lamb of God, who was saving people from their sins forever. After Jesus died, they put his body in a tomb and sealed it shut with a giant stone. But three days later, God sent an angel to roll the stone away. When he did, everyone could see that Jesus wasn't in there. Some ladies came to the tomb and the angel said to them, don't be afraid, he has risen from the dead. It was the best day ever. The women were filled with joy and hurried to find Jesus' friends. As they were telling the disciples all they had seen and heard, Jesus appeared and showed them all that he really was alive. Before he went back to heaven, Jesus told his disciples to go everywhere in the world and tell the good news to everyone. Jesus said, whoever believes will be saved. Just as God had saved his people long ago from slavery in Egypt, God had now saved everyone from their sins by sending his son, Jesus, to be the perfect sacrifice for all time. Because of what Jesus did, anyone who believes in him and follows him can be forgiven of their sins. Jesus is the best ever. Isn't that just the best? Jesus is truly the best ever. And that's what we need to know today. Say this after me. Jesus. Jesus. Is the best ever. Is the best ever. Let's say it again. Jesus. Jesus. Is the best ever. Is the best ever. Okay, we have some questions for you to think about. The first one is, God didn't want anyone to have to suffer and die for their sins. So who did God send to take away the sins of the world? It was Jesus. God's plan was to send his son Jesus, who is perfect in every way, to take the punishment for the wrong things we do once and for all. Oh man, that makes Jesus the best ever. Let's see if you can remember this. Jesus died on Friday and was put in a tomb. But what happened on Sunday? God brought Jesus back to life. And because Jesus is alive, we can live forever with him in heaven one day. And heaven is the best place ever. Now let's see what our final question is. Who can be saved and forgiven of their sins? Anyone or just some people? The Bible tells us that whoever believes in Jesus will be saved. That's right. Jesus died on the cross to take the punishment for everyone's sin so that we can all be forgiven forever. Jesus really is the best ever. It's amazing that he would die on a cross for us and come back to life so we can live forever with him one day. But I've always wondered why it took three days for him to come back to life. Have you ever thought about that? Well, actually my friend, I have. Here, check this out. Why was Jesus dead for three days before he came back to life? 
Well, there are actually three reasons. Number one, if he had died and then come right back to life, people could have argued that he never really died in the first place. Number two, many people who helped write the Bible and even Jesus himself said that he was going to be dead for three days. And if Jesus says he's going to do something, he always does it. And number three, Jesus died on a Friday, which was the same day the Passover lamb was sacrificed. Since Jesus is the lamb of God, that makes total sense. And because he was dead for only three days, that means he came back to life on the first day of the week. That makes sense too, because the first day of the week is a new beginning. And Jesus gave us a new beginning when he saved us from our sins and defeated death forever. And that's why Jesus was dead for three days before he came back to life. That's so awesome. Yeah, it is. Now what better way to celebrate all that Jesus has done for us than to sing the best song ever? I totally agree. Some of you may have heard this song before, but if you haven't, you'll catch on fast. This is a free South situation, so you can worship God in your own way right where you are. Now, remember, worship is a way to say thank you to God for all he's done, like sending Jesus to save us. So when you're dancing or singing along, make sure your mind is thinking about God and all that he's done for you. That's right. Now everyone get on your feet and worship together. talks about how Jesus is alive and that's the best news ever. It sure is. I'm so thankful that every day can be the best day ever, even after Easter is over. I'm also really thankful that God sent Jesus to earth to save us. Knowing that Jesus is alive and that we are forgiven makes every single day the best day ever, no matter what's going on around us. Now let's pray and thank God for all he's done. Everyone bow your heads and close your eyes as we pray together. Father God, thank you for sending Jesus to save us from our sins, and thank you for bringing him back to life so that we can live forever. 
please help us to believe in Jesus and follow him so that every day can be the best day ever. Amen. Now go and have the best Easter ever. Hey guys, I want to show you something today. First off, I want to show you this. All right, what is it? Can you see it? That's right. This is an egg. Now eggs, I'm going to come in a little bit closer. Eggs, we know they're pretty tasty, right? But you know what's cool about an egg? It reminds me of something. It reminds me of us before we came to know Jesus. Now, if you were to feel an egg, it's hard. Kind of like before we know God, our hearts are hard. And another thing about eggs is sometimes they can get marked up pretty easily. And the same happens to us. Do you know that what sin is? Well, sin is anything that we do that's against God. It's things that we think or that we say or that we do that are against his truth. So you might wonder, what kind of things are those? Have you ever lied before? I'm gonna write down lying. Because you know, I think you and I at times have lied. So not only is this hard, but now it's marked up by sin. Other things I think of, well, maybe when we don't obey our mom or our dad. Obey mom or dad. So what happens is it kind of marks our heart, right? Maybe we've stolen something before So over time, you can see how it, get, it continues to get marked more and more and more because sin does that. It makes a big mess of our hearts. And before we know it, it's almost like it looks something like this. But here's the good news. And that's what we want to share with you today is through Jesus Christ, here's what can happen. What happens is, because of Jesus' sacrifice for us and our acceptance of that, it starts to peel away all of our mistakes. So what once was marked up and hard, now starts to become soft and smooth and new. And by the time God gets done with us, no longer are we marked up and and just have all this stuff on our hearts we become brand new because through faith in Christ we are no longer the old creation but we become brand new now as you notice sometimes this process is a little messy and sometimes it takes a while but what's cool is God loves us he accepts us because of what Jesus did for us and he removes our heart of stone and he gives us a heart of flesh, something that's soft and spongy. Now, if you've ever eaten a hard boiled egg before, you can tell it's all soft. And, and that's actually what God wants. So though this process can get messy, by the time we're all done, we've got something that is no longer marked up, but we've got something that's soft and, um, and good. <laughs> So, I know it doesn't look great, but I'll tell you what, this is better than what it was before, am I right? Alright guys, just wanted to show you that and just give you something to think about. Thanks. Hey guys, Jesus is the best ever. If you want to know more about how to have a friendship with Jesus, check this out. Guess what? God loves you and wants to be your friend. John 3.16 says, God loved the people of this world so much that he gave his only son so that everyone who has faith in him will have eternal life and never really die. You can't be friends with God because of your sin. Ecclesiastes 7.20 says, Not a single person on earth is always good and never sins. What is sin? Sin is doing or thinking something that God says is wrong. God made a way for you to be his friend. He sent Jesus from heaven to earth to take the punishment for all of your sin. 
Just knowing about Jesus is not enough to fix your friendship with God. You need to admit you have done wrong things and you are truly sorry. Believe in your heart that Jesus died for you and that God brought him back to life. And commit to following Jesus as the leader and Lord of your life forever. Hey kids, it's Miss Hope. And Mr. Presley. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time about giving your hearts to Jesus, we want to celebrate with you during this exciting time. So please have your parents contact uh, Life Church, and that way we can help celebrate with you guys. If you did that, that is awesome. Today's story was amazing, and you just have to say it is great what God does for us, and it's knowing that He's so faithful, and we need to be faithful to Him. And happy Easter. Let's go ahead and bow our heads and pray. Dear God, thank you so much for what you do for us. And God, we just want to say thanks for you giving your son, Lord, to us so we can have everlasting life. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy Easter. We love you.